without further ado, we'll meet you on the mat. Namaste everybody, let's get started. So, we are going to start in a reclined bound angle. So, what I want you to do is to take the soles of your feet to touch, and they don't have to be too close to your um, sacrum. You don't want them to be all the way out here, just something that's nice and comfortable. Push the hips down before you then lie down onto your mat. So we're gonna get started in this position. And what tends to happen when we're in this position? So our muscles kind of subconsciously, without our control, kind of tenses up. So you might notice that the inner thighs, the muscles around the groin and the inner thighs might still be locked and quite tense. So I start in this position because I want you to start to almost soften those muscles. So start to release them. Let gravity push your knees down. Try to release that kind of fighting feeling that your body's giving in this pose because it is quite an unnatural pose. So just staying here. Maybe if you want to, you can blink the eyes closed just so that you can really start to feel yourself just settling into this flow. So we take one deep breath in, hold at the top, and then slowly we control the exhale. So settling into our flow, kind of leaving the rest of the day behind you and just devoting the next half an hour to yourself. And just really focusing on this practice that we're doing. One more inhale in, hold at the top, and then slowly let the breath go. Try to soften the muscles in the inner thighs. One more deep inhale. Big one yet, keep breathing in. Hold the breath at the top, and then slowly, maybe in the comfort of your own home, sigh out. Good work. Slowly and gently, I want you to come up to seated. So keep the knees, try to keep them where they are, trying to let them travel up. And then once you're seated, maybe try to move the glute muscles away from the sit bones. So you're really rooting down into the mat with the sit bones. And we're here in now seated bound angle. So what we're going to do is just slowly take the hands up to ceiling. So we're finding a nice straight spine. And then slowly and gently, we can round the spine here as we forward fold on the exhale. Once you're there, interlace the fingers around the toes and just let yourself melt into this. I like to call it butterfly pose. It's actually bound, we're binding the toes, bound angle. And just settle into this pose. So now that we're seated, it's kind of adding a little bit more pressure onto the hips. So we're slowly starting to kind of lubricate that joint, slowly moving all of the connective tissue and the muscles around there. So slowly take one inhale in, and then slowly let the breath go. One more. Kind of let the breath guide you, as cheesy as that sounds, through the practice. Now, so slowly on the next inhale, we're going to come up to see to let go of the toes. Then I want you to take the hands underneath the knees and slowly pry them together, slowly and gently. Take the time. So they might feel a little bit weird. Once your knees are together, I want you to cross your legs and then slowly roll over to your tabletop position. So I tend to do this one a lot at the beginning of the practice. So make sure, again, we're checking alignment. Knees are directly underneath the hips. We want a safe practice. Hands are directly underneath the shoulders. And now we're going to go through cat cows, which you're probably used to. Make sure the feet are nice and relaxed so the toes are untapped. And then when you're ready, as you inhale, we're going to drop the belly, drop the spine, squeeze the shoulder base together as you look up. And then as you exhale, rounding the spine, we're going to start to push the floor away with our hands. So almost protracting the shoulders. So you want your, it's, the goal is to get the armpits as far away from the floor as possible. Once you're here, I want you to drop the head. And then we're just going to shake no, shake yes. Releasing the neck. As you inhale, drop the belly, drop the spine, and look up, squeeze, really squeeze the shoulder blades together. That's the key to this pose here. As you exhale, round the spine, push the floor away. One more inhale. Dropping the belly, drop the spine, really arch the back on this last one. As you exhale, rounding the spine. Drop the head, maybe give one more shake, yes and no. As you inhale, come back to find neutral table. So I'm just going to face you here. And then slowly as we inhale, we're going to lift up the right leg. So nice right angle here. And we're slowly going to go through some fire hydrants. So slowly and gently as you exhale, moving this femur. So really lubricating the hip socket here. Just moving it around in circles before we find a kind of variation of gate pose, which is really going to start to open up the hips. So just warming up. This is also going to slowly create some heat through the body so that we can be nice and supple. 
As you next inhale, I want you to take the right leg out to the side. So once you're there, the foot is going to be flat onto the floor. And make sure it's in line with the knee. So don't wait your foot to be all the way here or behind you. It's nice in line with the knee. And then slowly and gently, we're going to start to open up the inside of the right thigh. So as you inhale, we're going to move our bodies forward. This is also going to help warm up the wrists. Then as you exhale, you're going to push the bum back towards your left heel. And then you're really going to start to feel the inside of this thigh opening. As you inhale, moving forward, make sure that left foot is untapped and really help in this pose. As you exhale, push the bum back and really deepen the, the stretch there. We'll go one more. Inhale, moving forward. So I like to move dynamically through poses just to help the body loosen up. As you exhale, push the bum back. Once you're here, third round, we're going to come down to the forearms and just settle into this pose. You're going to feel the um, adductors, maybe even the sartorius, which runs across and up. You might feel that opening as well. So holding here for one inhale, and then slowly exhale. Maybe sink into this pose for one more breath. Good. As you inhale, we're going to slowly come back up. Bring this leg back in. We're going to go through one cat cow to reset the spine. So as you inhale, we drop the belly, arch the back, squeeze the shoulder blades. As you exhale, rounding the spine. Now we go through the other side. So as you next inhale, we're going to lift the left leg up. Then as you exhale, Slow fire hydrants, moving that thigh, the femur around in circles, and you'll slowly start to create heat. You might feel the external rotators on the outside, they might feel a little bit tight. Just creating heat. On your next inhale, I want you to take that left leg out to the side. So make sure again the foot is nice and flat on the floor, and the foot or the arch of the foot is in line with this right knee. And then we'll go through those movements. So as you inhale, we're going to shift the body forward. Then as you exhale, push the bum back towards the right heel. Make sure that right foot is untucked. Good. Inhale, rolling forward. Exhale, push the bum back. Good. Guiding the breath or the breath down you need. One more. Inhale, rolling forward. Exhale, push the bum back. Last one. We come down to the forearms and then settling into this kind of gate pose variation. So, just settling here, you'll feel again the inside of the adductors opening, the sartorius, which I feel mostly in this pose. So slowly and gently opening up the hips. As you next inhale, slowly make your way to tabletop position. So bringing that leg back in. This time, as you exhale, okay, make sure the alignment is correct. So hands directly underneath the shoulders. This time, as you exhale, we're going to lift the chin up and then drop the chest and then the, and then the chin meets the mat. So now we're in this kind of open, it's called the Ashtanga Namaskar, eight limb pose. Exhale, settle into this one. Make sure the feet are untucked. As you inhale, we're going to scoop the chest up into cobra position. So this is where the hips and the knees are on the floor, on the mat, sorry. Toes are untucked, press the top of your feet into the mat. This is going to help to slowly activate the hamstring, so to protect the lower spine, the lower back, sorry. If you want to, there's an option here to tuck the toes and just lift the hips and the knees. We're in floating dog now. So cobra or floating dog. I'm going to say floating dog. It's really good for the lower spine. And holding here, almost squeeze the shoulder blades together so the chest is proud. Hold for an inhale. And then as you exhale, if you're a floating dog, untuck the toes and then push the bum back, finding child's pose position. So the head is going to rest down here. So you notice this is quite a nice slow flow. So really, really gentle. Good work. As you next inhale, we're going to slowly come up to tabletop. Now this is where we're going to find quad pose. So I want you to face the side of your mat. So you're horizontal on your mat, or if you've got space to stay where you are. What we're going to do is we're going to walk the knees out slightly as far as your flexibility allows. Okay, so don't try to push it too much. So I'm going to probably go about to here. So once I've walked the knees out, I'm going to take the feet outside the line of the knee. So, like this. And then, slowly and gently, as you exhale, make sure you're exhaling as you do this, you're going to come down to your forearms. And now you're in frog pose position. And this is the one that I'm going to make you stay in for about 90 seconds, okay? So I'm going to watch my clock, because it does take a while <laughs> for your body to kind of let go into this pose. Um, this is actually one of my favorite poses. 
Um, so make sure you're settled into frog pose. And if it feels uncomfortable, just focus on making your exhale slow. So I call them yogi breath. So making sure that the exhales are as long as you can make them. So that's the goal here. Then you'll find that the body relaxes. So if you're spiritual, if you believe in, or if you're, if you're used to yoga, or you're, you know, you're in touch with your emotions, let's say, or you're spiritual, um, a lot of people believe that the hips hold a lot of our emotions. So if we're stressed or if we're dealing with it a lot emotionally, it tends to get stored in our hips. And I never really used to believe this, but I used to, so I saw my osteopath who I see like every other week. And this guy knows everything. They got Stephen at Perfect Balance Clinic. I literally talked to him about everything and everything. And I remember telling him about one of my friends and I said, she's got really tight hips and she's got lower back pain. And he was like to me, she must be dealing with a lot of emotional trauma. And I couldn't believe that he said that because I was trying to kind of understand that, I was trying to believe that on the spiritual side of yoga, but then he confirmed it from a scientific perspective. So this is one of the poses that is really, really good for opening up the hips. <laughs> and maybe at the end of the practice, you might find it a little bit more relaxed. So if you're in frog pose and you're still here, so we've been here for about a minute, <laughs> 30 more seconds, I promise we won't stay too long. Um, you might notice that the hips have started sinking a little bit, but also with my hips, I've noticed that my knees have come out a little bit. So luckily in this pose, all we have to do is let gravity do the work. So as long as you just, all you have to do is focus on your exhales and you'll notice that the hips are opening up. And this is one of the poses that once you release the hips, you'll feel, I'm currently feeling my SI joints like suddenly becoming quite free. I could go on and about this pose, but we are going to come out of it. So, on your next inhale, you're going to come up onto the palms, slowly and gently, and then you're going to slowly, maybe 10 steps, walk the knees back in together. So they're going to feel really weird, mine feels so weird. And then slowly and gently, we're going to tuck the toes, and as you next exhale, push the bum up into your downward facing dog. So first one of the practice, this is probably the only one of the practice, so I want you to come up high into your toes, and then as you exhale, we're going to pedal out the feet. I always, always, always do this. So if you're used to my Friday flows, you'll know that this is what I always do in the first downward facing dog. So pedaling out the feet. Maybe you drop the hips as well. So dropping the hips side to side. I also like to take one foot and use it to press down the heel on the other leg. You can do so many movements in this position. So slowly and gently downward facing dog. And when you're ready, finding your stable downward facing dog. So knees are bent most likely to allow the back to be straight. And then as you next inhale, right foot comes up to the ceiling. We find length through the back of the body. As you exhale, we're going to bring the right foot in between the palms. If it doesn't quite reach, you can use your hands to shimmy forward. We're going to drop the left knee and relax the left foot. As you next inhale, we're going to sweep the hands up to the ceiling. Now we're in low lunge position. So with this one, try to almost have a neutral pelvis. So it's quite hard. You might find that you might be arching the back a little bit. It's okay if you're leaning forward. You can see that I still have a straight line from the back of the thigh all the way up to the body when I'm leaning forward. That's fine. If you've got flexible hips, you might need to lean forward to do this. So hold for an inhale. Sorry, we're up here. <laughs> then as you exhale, I want you to release the right hand down and then slowly and gently take the left elbow outside of the right knee. So now we're in a twisted low lunge. So usually we have our hands at heart center, but there's an option here. So you can stay here. This is as good as enough of a stretch. You'll feel this in the quad already in the hip flexors. If you want to, only if it's in your practice, maybe lift up the left leg and grab hold of the left foot. This is gonna really challenge your hip flexor. Flexibility is gonna challenge your quad flexibility. I'm feeling this all the way down in my knee. Some of you might feel it all the way up near the, the hip flexor and the hip socket. And we're just gonna hold here for an inhale. And then slowly let the breath go. Good work. As you next inhale, we're slowly gonna release. If you're holding onto that foot, release it down. And then bring yourself back to center. Now when you're here, I want you to heel toe the right foot to the outside of your mat, to the crane space here. And then slowly and gently as you exhale, left forearm comes down first. Let me show you from the other side. So left forearm comes down first, if that feels good. So some of you might be on the left forearm staying on the right palm. If it feels good, only if it feels good, don't push it. 
does the right forearm come down? I'm not going to do it because it hurts so much. I'm going to stay on my right palm if you want to. Right forearm comes down. You'll find yourself in lizard pose. This is one of the first poses I did um, in my first Friday flow. <laughs> and I got so many people going, why would you make me do that? This is such an underrated hip opener, this one. You'll feel this on the inside, towards the top of the inner thigh. But you might also feel it for the external rotators on the outside. So we're going to hold here. And with this pose, it's okay if the knee drifts out. It doesn't have to be in line. But it's okay if it drifts out. That's going to create some space. Hold for one inhale. And then one exhale. Nice. As you next inhale, come up onto both palms. And then slowly and gently, you're going to heel toe the right foot. Heel toe towards the left hand. Once you're there, you're going to drop the knee down. And then if that foot drifts in slightly, that's completely fine. We won't go into full pigeon. So what I want you to do is to bend your back leg. So now you're kind of in this 90-90 position. So I want you to make sure that the shin is parallel to the top of your mat. So I'm going to go back to my mat. The shin is now parallel. Now what I want you to do, as you inhale, the left arm comes all the way up. Keep the right hand where it is. Then as you exhale, you're going to start to forward fold into this kind of half pigeon position. So already you might feel this on the outside of the hip. The external rotators, maybe if you've got um, tight piriformis, you might feel that tugging in this one. If you can, maybe reach both hands forwards and then sink the hip down. Remembering with every exhale that the body relaxes. So trying to focus on making sure or ensuring that happens. One more deep breath in. And then a deep breath out. Good. As you next inhale, we just slowly just come up to the palms just a little bit if you are reaching forward. We're going to slowly walk the hands towards the left. So what I want you to do is to hook the right elbow. I'll show you front on. So hook the right elbow onto the right foot. So we're kind of in this twisted position. And then as you exhale, start to sink down. This is going to deepen the stretch on the outside of the hip. Make sure that that shin is still parallel to the top of the mat, which you should be able to do once that back leg is bent. So staying here. Deep inhale, and then deep exhale. Nice. As you next inhale, maybe slowly come up, and then gently, in your own time, release yourself back into your down facing dog. Nice. Remember in bent legs, maybe you'll notice the difference in both hips, maybe you don't. It sometimes takes a while, so you might feel the benefits later on in the evening. Find your downward facing dog position. As you inhale, left foot lifts up to the ceiling. As you exhale, left foot in between the palms. Drop the right knee and relax the right foot. We go through the other side. Good. So as you inhale, we're going to sweep the hands up to the ceiling, finding length. Good. And then maybe start to sink in with every exhale, so sinking the hips forward, but making sure that you're not tilting the pelvis as you do so. You're keeping it tucked under, nice and neutral and then you'll feel the stretch on the right hip flexor. Good. So both hands are up at the ceiling. One more inhale. Then as you exhale, I want you to slowly and gently bring the left elbow, sorry, the right elbow onto the outside of the left knee. So I'm going to switch sides. So right hand, elbow hooks onto the outside of the left knee. So this hand can be down. Usually it would be in prayer pose, but there's an option for you. So same here. Or, if it's in your practice, I did this yesterday and my hamstring cramped. <laughs> so, slowly and gently, if it's in your practice, as you inhale, lift that back foot up and grab hold of the foot. Then, you'll feel this in the quads as well as the hip flexors. So, if you're cramping, I'm really, really sorry. I used to do this in my studio classes and I just see the men at the back just cramping left, right and centre. It was the funniest thing and I had to try and hold a straight face. So, if you're cramping, I am extremely sorry. Um, <laughs> but if you are cramping, make sure to come out of this and and just kind of release yourself out of this pose. So, one more inhale, let go of my foot. Then as you exhale, if you're holding onto that back foot, maybe release it down, and then bring both hands to the front of your mat. Slowly and gently, we're gonna to start to heel toe the left foot towards the outside of the mat. Just gonna switch sides. And then, if it feels good, right forearm comes down first, the right foot, the right one comes down first, so the outside one. You can stay onto that left palm, or if it feels good for you, come down to the left forearm. So I can do that on this side. My body's, <laughs> my body has, has favoured sides, so this would be full lizard pose. So if you can, 
um, keep that knee um, in one line, or if you need to, and it's completely fine if you need to, you can let that knee drop outwards. And then you'll feel the hips start to open out. Hold for maybe two big breaths. Take an inhale and take an exhale. One more breath, inhaling, and then a slow exhale. As you next inhale, we're going to come up onto the palms, and then you're going to start to heel toe the left foot towards the right hand. Once you're there, you're going to let that knee drop, and then slowly bring that right leg just halfway through. So it's both legs are kind of at a 90 degree position. So this pose is actually called 90-90, which I quite like <laughs> in the English. I'm not sure what it's called in Sanskrit. So we're going to stretch the outside of the left glute. So when you're ready, as you inhale, you're going to take the right hand up to the ceiling. Then as you exhale, you're going to start to fold forwards. I'm just going to go back to my mat. Fold forwards. So I make, sure, I make sure you take the right hand up first so that you're almost squaring the body. Good. And then if you can, maybe take both hands out in front of you and just start to forward fold into this. On my left side, this is absolutely brutal. So my left piriformis is so much tighter than the right side. So we're going to stay here for maybe two to three breaths because it does take the body a while to kind of release itself into this one. So hold, big belly breath in, don't lose, don't lose rhythm of that breath. And then slowly exhale. And that's one more breath. And then slowly exhale. Good, as you next inhale, come up onto your palms. We're gonna slowly, gently make our way into the downward facing dog again. And again, stable downward facing dog. As you next inhale, we're going to lift the left foot back up again. And then as you exhale, the left foot comes in between the palms. But then we're slowly going to walk our hands to the side of our mat. You're going to drop down onto this left foot. And you're going to come into Skandasana. So low, lunge, low side lunge. The right foot is going to be lifted off of the mat. So you're just on your heel. And you'll feel this on the inside of that hip as well. So staying here. In, I love the name of this, it's called Skandasana in Sanskrit, or side lunge for me in English. <laughs> so stay here, as you next inhale, you're slowly going to make your way up, and exhale over to the other side. So we're going to do that once more, so switching over to the left side, switching over to the right side, but make sure you can start to sink the hip down. So you'll feel this in the inside of the hip. One more inhale, make your way up, exhale, shift to the left leg, maybe try to really if you can, push the left knee away with the elbow and you'll really feel the hips opening. Inhale once more to come up. Exhale, bring your body down to the right side. If you can, push the right knee away from you with the elbow. So, skin basana. Foot is nice and active, holding here. Good. As you next inhale, we're going to make your way up. But then you're slowly going to walk the hands towards the top of your mat again. And then you're going to bring the right foot to meet the left. Make sure the feet are outside, on the outside of your mat. You're going to slowly sink your way down into this Malasana variation. So a low yogi squat, show from the front. So feet are out, nice and wide. If you can, hands at heart center. Elbows are pushing the knees out. So from the side, try not to round your spine like this. Try to, if you need to walk the feet out slightly, try to have a nice active spine. So you're almost making your body um, reach upwards. So nice straight spine. Once you find that straight spine, you're really going to feel the hips opening. So if you can, hands together, heart center, staying here in the last one. If you want to, you can start to maybe move side to side to help open out the hips. Stay for an inhale. And then slowly exhale. Good. One more. Big belly breath in. We're going to make our way down to the mat. Then as you exhale, you're going to slowly plunk your bum down. <laughs> and then let your legs come out in front of you. So with um, lower back tightness, a lot of it's connected to the hamstring. So we're going to open up the hamstring just a little bit. So what we need to do, right leg is going to bend. You're going to bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of that left thigh. So it's called janitor sasana, which is what we're going to do next, but we're going to revolve it. So it's going to be nice and open for the lower back as well as the hamstring. So what we need to do, take your right hand, push the right knee as far down to the floor as you can. So using your arm strength, push that knee down, try to open up the hips just a little bit. As you next inhale, we're going to take the left hand up to the ceiling, 
Then as you exhale, you're going to start to forward fold, bringing the hand to the outside of the foot. You'll feel this in the hamstring straight away. Try to have your body facing forwards. It might not quite make it, you might still be twisted a little bit, but try to have your body facing forwards. So we're almost going to go to knee to head pose, but we're going to revolve it. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your right hand behind you. So in this position now. And then slowly and gently, I want you to look up towards the ceiling. So we're going to twist our chest to face the right side of the room. So hand is behind you, you're going to look up at the ceiling. As you next inhale, the right hand is going to swing up. Then as you exhale, let that right hand come down towards your toes. Straight away, you're going to feel this in the QL, quadratus lingorum on the right side. That's one of the muscles that if it's tight, you're going to feel lower back pain. So we're in this revolved jet head to knee pose, then it's your satsuna if you're into yoga. And holding here, looking up at the ceiling is really going to help here. For one more inhale, and then let the breath go. It's nice. As you next inhale, you're going to swing the right hand up. Oh my god, that feels so good. <laughs> and then let that right leg go down. Maybe give yourselves a quick shake, and then we'll go to the other side. So bending the left leg, bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. I'm trying to get my lefts and rights corrected. And then as you inhale, make sure, actually first before you do that, push the left knee down towards the floor. Create space. As you inhale, we're going to take the right hand up to the ceiling. Find length through the spine, nice straight spine. As you exhale, forward fold into your knee to head pose on this side. So we stay here for a bit. One second before we find the revolved ones. Just open up the hamstrings. As you next inhale, we're to take the left arm behind you and then start to look up at the ceiling. Exhale for a second here, just settling in. As you next inhale, you're going to take the left hand up. Already you might start to feel this in the QL. Then as you exhale, that left hand comes down towards the toes. Remember that the, um, the chest is twisted to face the left side of the room. So we're in this revolved knee to head pose. You'll feel this in the lower back on the left side. One more breath, inhale, look up at the ceiling. Slowly let the breath go. Let's go for one more on this side, inhale. Big belly breath, exhale. As you next inhale, bring the left hand up, releasing slowly. Let the left leg go straight out to meet the right. Give a quick shake. And then slowly and gently come to lie down onto your mat. Final poses that we're finding here. I want you to squeeze your knees into your chest. And then maybe see if you can tap your knees with your forehead. Surrounding the spine. Drop the head down. As you next exhale, I want you to take the soles of the feet to face the ceiling. Once they're there, grab hold of the outside of your feet. And then, slowly and gently, you're going to pull the knees down towards the armpits. This one, you might already feel in the lumbar spine. So, this is called Happy Baby because I think I did it last week or the week before. It's one of my favourite poses in yoga. Um, and it's kind of designed to reinforce this primary curve that we had in the lumbar spine when we were babies. So hence the name Happy Baby Pose, which I love. And this, you're going to feel on the hips, but mainly in the lower back. So in this pose, you can sway side to side because your lower back is rounded. So you can massage the lower part of your back. Just staying here. If you can, you can also start to straighten the legs out. Only if, it's, <laughs> if you've got flexible hamstrings and hips, so I'm going to stay here. But that, that's really going to help open up the lower back as well. So holding here for an inhale. And then slowly exhale. Last pull down, so pulling the knees down if you can. One more inhale. Last exhale, we pull even deeper into this pose. Nice. As you next inhale, maybe let go of the feet, bring the knees together. And then we're going to start to rock forwards and backwards. So we're creating momentum here. Rolling forwards and backwards. We're going to take the feet up and then down behind us. So now we're in plow pose. So let me come forward a little bit. So this one you already feel, you might already feel it in the, actually if you're on plow, try not to move your head. I just did it <laughs> really bad. Try to keep, um, sorry, try to, <laughs> lost my words, bring the hands to the lower back because it's going to help support. And the feet don't have to touch the mat at the back. So a lot of people can do that. They can tap their feet behind. We've got tight hamstrings, tight calves. They can hover here. You'll feel this in the lower back. 
You might feel it in the glutes, you might feel it in the hamstrings, you might feel it in the calves. If you're super, super tight, you might also feel it in the plantar fascia. So a really all-rounded, great pose. So hold them here. If you can, maybe start to bring the feet down towards the mat on every exhale. The body will naturally start to relax into this. One big breath in, and then big breath out. Nice, slowly and gently, I want to bend the knees to bring the feet towards the bum, the heel towards the bum, and then slowly and gently release the bum down. Nice. Now what I want to do is to take the right leg, cross it over the left, if you can, put the right foot under the left shin, if you can. So we're crossing the legs as much as we can here. Slowly and gently, as you next exhale, we need to take both knees down towards the left side. Try to keep the shoulders where they are. So now we're in this supine twist. If you can, if this feels good, you'll feel this in the lower back, take the hands out in this kind of cactus position. So when I say cactus, it's in this position. Or if you can, take the hands directly towards the sides and you'll find yourself in a supine twist. So a really good, <laughs> the floor's really cold, a really good um, spinal twist. And it's this, the reason why I cross the legs is because it will start to pull on the external rotators on the right side, which will start to release the back just a little bit. So cactus in the arms out if you can. We stay for one big breath, slow exhale. Nice. As you next inhale, take the knees back towards centre, uncross them and then cross them towards the other side. So left leg goes over the right. If you can, hook the left foot under the right shin. We're so finding this double cross. And then slowly and gently as you exhale, take the knees down towards the right side. So for me, the left side is super tight compared to the right side. So this feels really good on my left side. So holding, big breath in and big breath out. One more, inhale, slowly breathing out. Nice, as you next inhale, bring the knees back to center, and then you find my favorite pose of yoga. Actually, we're not gonna do that one. We are gonna go back to the original pose we did at the start. So, soles of the feet are gonna to touch, drop the knees out, find yourself in the first pose we did, so recline bound angle. I usually would, um, say going to Shavasana, so the one where you're just lying dead still. Um, but I say let's go back to the pose that we did at the start. So I want you to maybe notice if the hips feel different, or if the lower back feels different. So we take one big breath in, big belly breath, let all the air into the lungs. We're going to hold the breath at the top, keep holding, keep holding, I always do this. It's annoying, I know. Keep holding, keep holding. And then you're in the comfort of your own home. We're gonna X, we're gonna start the exhale. So I just made a follow myself on Instagram, so you guys can do it at home. And then again, what I want you to do is maybe, if your body's already relaxed, that's great. But if you can, maybe take awareness to the inner thighs, the adductors, the groin, and start to soften those muscles. So allow the knees to be pushed down by gravity. So my lower back already feels quite open. And we're gonna stay here for about a minute or so, as I always do. Stay in Shavasana is really, really important. For my version of Shavasana today, really, really important that you let the body know that you're done moving so that it can start recovery mode. Because otherwise it's just gonna be confused, we're gonna think that we're still moving. So we have to let the body know that we're done. So staying here, slowly and gently, maybe start to take a body scan from Kind of the shoulders down, the back down, hips. Maybe bring awareness to areas of the body that might have been holding on to tension before. Maybe there are new areas that have come to light, which is what tends to happen when you release certain parts of the body. Maybe you blink the eyes closed, start to find this kind of meditation, relaxation, this mental bliss that you might find after yoga. And then slowly and gently, just relaxing. The flow is over, so that was a really nice gentle hip and lower back release. So again, option for you, if you want to, you can just stay in Shavasana. Who am I to tell you to come out of it? But if you want to, you can come out of it and the flow is over. So thank you so much for flowing with me.